we are talking about off design uh, operation of the jet aircraft engine that is what we talked about in the last class. In today's class, we will talk about matching of these uh, engine components uh, for various design and off design operating conditions. And to begin with, of course, we will see uh, how they are matched uh, at least at the design point uh, when the engine is initially designed. So, today's lecture is about matching of engine components. Let us take a look at some of the issues that are related to matching of the engine components. Uh, there are large number of components as we know, we have intakes, compressors, combustion chamber, turbine and nozzle, all of them put together uh, constitute an, an engine and we will have to see how these various components are matched together into one single unit uh, which we call a jet aircraft engine. So, let us take a look at a typical uh, schematic of uh, what is uh, considered an aircraft engine and how various parameters influence the matching of these uh, components. If you have an engine that uh, operates at let us say an incoming uh, flow velocity V A and outgoing velocity V E, what happens is the we normally express uh, various uh, functions of the engine in terms of uh, the incoming pressure and temperature and uh, the velocity uh, which is shown here. And the engine performance is quite often expressed uh, as function of these parameters along with the fuel flow uh, m dot f. Now, the fact that the engine taken all these components together is a one single unit and it is a it is expected to be and supposed to be a self contained unit. One set of engine parameters uh, essentially influences and instantaneously fixes all the other parameters. So, if there is a change of parameter in anywhere in the engine, uh, it tends to influence the parameters at other components of the engine. Uh, almost instantaneously. So, this is where the matching comes in that we keep an eye on the change of these parameters. So, that uh, when they tend to influence each other, they influence each other in a matched manner and that is the important issue that we are discussing in today's lecture. Let us take a look at some of the parameters that uh, fundamental parameters that uh, we would need to uh, keep our eyes on. The instantaneous cycle temperature ratio T 0 3 by T 0 1 uh, tends to fix the cycle pressure ratio given the engine, instantaneous fuel flow m dot f and the instantaneous rot rot rotational speed uh, r p m n. Now, all these things are to be matched that means, uh, these parameters which we call the performance parameters at any particular instant they are connected to each other and essentially if any one of them changes, uh, the other three would automatically uh, need to be changed or would change and that matching is an important issue at any given instant of operation of the engine. If we have multi spool or multi shaft engine, the ratio between the shaft speeds n 2 by n 1 also uh, is getting fixed by the temperature ratio T 0 3 by T 0 1. Uh, so, that is another issue if you have a multi spool engine uh, different spools run at different speeds and then they come into the picture again and they would also need instantaneous uh, change to uh, conform to the changes of the four fundamental parameters that we have talked about. The basic operating condition of the engine the propelling nozzle that we have uh, for the main core flow or the hot flow and we have uh, another nozzle for the bypass flow which is the cold flow. Typically, it is assumed that for most of the time of operation of the engine, this is choked and this is by design and uh, the purpose of doing this by design is to keep the thrust as high as possible for every operating condition. Uh, not that you get maximum thrust all the time, 
but what you get is for that operating condition you get maximum thrust. So, keeping the flow choked or maximizing the mass flow ensures for that particular instantaneous operating condition you are getting the maximum thrust. So, the engine always responds to the inlet stagnation condition. However, once the flow has gone inside the engine, it is a self contained unit, they respond to the other parameters within the engine and they become somewhat unresponsive or unaware of the forward speed of the engine and the aircraft. So, once the engine starts operating and it starts moving, the internal parameters of the engine influence each other instantaneously, uh, not so much as the forward speed of the aircraft. So, that is another important uh, issue that we need to keep our eyes on that the internal parameters are uh, more influential rather than the forward speed of the aircraft. Let us look at what are the non-dimensional uh, variables of the engine that uh, we would probably need to keep our eyes on and these non-dimensional variables are what really uh, influence each other profoundly. Uh, so, we need to figure out what these non-dimensional parameters uh, are. First, let us consider the mass flow through the engine and uh, this can be written in terms of uh, m dot a, which can be written in terms of uh, function of uh, rotational speed and as we mentioned the inlet stagnation pressure and stagnation temperature which contains the velocity field that it has come in with. The mass flow can also be written in terms of the turbine inlet temperature that means, they, they can be written in terms of the uh, T 0 3, P 0 1 and T 0 1 or they can be written in terms of the fuel flow rate that is uh, a function of m dot f P 0 1 and T 0 1. See in a sense all three of them are true that uh, the mass flow through the engine uh, does depend on all these parameters put together. That means, uh, not only P 0 1, T 0 1 with which uh, of course, the flow came in, but the other three important parameters that we talked about the rotational speed, the turbine inlet temperature and the fuel flow rate. All three along with the initial two parameters influence the mass flow rate through the engine. So, we need to keep our eyes on all these parameters, the inlet conditions, the speed, the turbine inlet uh, temperature and the fuel flow rate. All of them together influence what the mass flow through the engine uh, should be at any given instant. So, the non-dimensional mass flow uh, can be derived, uh, one can sit down and derive it, it is not a very big problem really uh, from the dimensional analysis which many of you may have done in your other courses which is popularly often known as Buckingham Pi theorem. And if you do that, then the non-dimensional mass flow rate can be uh, derived and written down as m dot bore as the uh, non-dimensional mass flow rate in terms of m dot a into root over uh, C p into T 0 1 and that divided by d square uh, into P 0 1. Now, T 0 1, P 0 1 are the inlet conditions, C p is the uh, specific heat and uh, d of course, is the characteristic diameter of the engine. Typically, this is likely to be the diameter of the inlet of the engine and uh, hence, this essentially uh, d square essentially represents a representative area of the engine and typically it, it comes from the inlet area of the fan, which is typically also uh, likely to be the maximum diameter of the engine uh, at any given time. Now, uh, some of the issues related to the non-dimensional mass flow can be now looked at from slightly different point of view. We can see here in this diagram that uh, the functional dependence of various parameters can be uh, plotted together. We had a look at this diagram in the last lecture also. The specific fuel consumption and the net thrust are the two axes and the variables in the upper and the lower uh, pictures are shown here. In the upper picture, we have the turbine inlet temperature as variable. In the lower picture, we have the rotating speed as variable 
and as we were just discussing all of them together actually impact on what is happening inside the engine. Now, uh, what this picture shows is that the lines of constant turbine temperature and the constant speed in the upper and the lower diagrams are can be considered to be essentially parallel to one another and if that is so, if that is accepted, then once one variable is chosen, the other variables are also fixed. So, diagrammatically it, it is shown here that uh, the fundamental parameters that we are talking about essentially influence each other and in this diagram it is captured together in one characteristic plot. So, the dependence or the functional dependence of the engine parameters uh, can be captured with a few uh, simplifying assumptions. Let us take a look at uh, how do we go about uh, normalizing the parameters. We had a look at the mass flow of the uh, engine as a uh, non-dimensional mass flow. However, that non-dimensional mass flow quite often is not used because once an engine is made and once the operating condition is fixed, C p is constant and d square is constant. Now, d square we mentioned is a characteristic area of the engine at uh, typically uh, at the inlet to the engine any other fan and C p is the operating specific heat uh, of the operating uh, working medium. Uh, now, if they are held constant and taken out of a definition of the uh, mass flow, what we get here is a normalized mass flow of air, which can be written down in terms of just m dot a into root over t 0 1 by p 0 1. Now, this is what you would see in many of the books and we will also look at some of the diagrams in which this normalized parameter is used as mass flow parameter uh, and not the non-dimensional parameter. So, this normalized parameter is not non-dimensional, it has units and it has uh, which can be written down depending on what unit you are using. Correspondingly, the normalized fuel flow can also be uh, written down on and can be derived in exactly the similar manner using dimensional analysis as m dot f bar that will be equal to m dot f divided by root over t 0 3 into p 0 3. And correspondingly, the non-dimensional speed is uh, can be written down as n divided by root over t 0 1 uh, root over t 0 1. Now, this essentially uh, gives us the so called normalized values, which quite often people use. However, quite often for a mass flow uh, configuration, a corrected mass flow, which has units of normal kilograms per second can be written down in terms of uh, m dot a into uh, capital theta divided by delta. Now, capital theta is, uh, is the temperature ratio of the operating temperature to the inlet to the uh, let us say compressor to the reference temperature. Now, this reference temperature is often uh, as per the standard temperature and pressure and hence uh, these values are uh, essentially referring to the standard temperature and pressure as used in international usages. The density we are talking about is the again with respect to a reference density and again with respect to the standard temperature and pressure and these values are normally uh, used internationally as uh, standard values. So, one can define corrected mass flow with reference to those standard temperatures and pressures and hence all mass flows under all operating conditions can be corrected for one standard value of temperature, one set of standard value of temperature and pressure and this is pretty much a done thing in many of the engine uh, characteristic uh, plots or graphs that are used for characterizing the engines or the components of the engines like compressors or turbines. So, one is you can normalize the values, another is you can use corrected uh, uh, mass flows for uh, correcting it to uh, standard temperature and pressure. Let us look at what are the possible uh, ways one can go about creating a matched engine. The first step of course, is uh, selecting the operating point, which is often the altitude and the flight condition. Uh, many of the transport aircraft for example, uh, engines 
might be having operating point uh, which is uh, take off condition, but many of the uh, military aircraft the operating point selected here could be a flight condition with a very high Mach number at some altitude. So, that needs to be uh, selected first to begin the matching procedure. Now, from the ambient condition that means the above three uh, figures pressure, temperature and Mach number one can get the uh, total pressure at the entry to the compressor and that is P 1 and the total temperature T 1. Then one needs to select the maximum turbine entry temperature which is often selected from the state of art of turbine uh, design and depending on what is the temperature that turbine can withstand that is one of the consideration. Another of course, is the cycle design which uh, one needs to do a priori and from these two one gets an idea what the value of T 3 should be for which we would be proceeding towards creating a matched engine. Next is the rotational sp speed which also comes from the basic engine considerations. Uh, various kinds of engines have various kinds of typical rotational speeds. As we have seen before for turbo shaft they could be of, of the order of 30, 40,000 rpm whereas for military aircraft engines they are of the order of 15 to 18,000 rpm whereas for transport aircraft engine, civil aircraft engines they are of the order of 10,000 rpm for the HP spools, the LP spools would be lower than that. And then of course, you get uh, two normalized speed parameters, uh, one with reference to the compressor temperature, another with reference to the turbine temperature. So, the first one is normally used for characterizing the compressor performance, the second one is normally used for characterizing the turbine performance. And then one needs to select the compressor pressure ratio, which normally would come from detail uh, cycle analysis and the cycle design and that should uh, fix the value of compressor pressure ratio P 0 2 by P 0 1. And then from which uh, one can find out the mass flow parameter, the normalized parameter which is what one should be using for characterizing the various engine and compressor performances. So, all these parameters together now define what the comp compressor operation point would be and as uh, we have discussed before, um, you have done in compressor chapter and uh, we have discussed in the earlier lectures that compressor performance has the minimum operating zone or range of uh, mass flows and hence compressor operation uh, is one of the first things that we need to uh, fix uh, before fixing the others because uh, typically every almost every engine the range of operation is fixed by the compressor's range of operation and hence we need to fix the compressor operation uh, before the others. If we look at the compressor map as we were talking about, uh, we see the mass flow parameter that we have defined, we see the pressure ratio on the y axis and then the constant speed lines which are now in terms of n by root over T 1. So, uh, these speed lines are uh, taken out the temperature uh, which could vary from operating point to operating point. And of course, uh, typical compressor uh, performance graph is shown over here. So, uh, once we have uh, these parameters fixed, uh, we would know where the design point is likely to be which is somewhere on the 100 percent line and that would define where our matching should start. And rest of the uh, operating points as we have seen before are the so called off design operating point. So, first we have to do the matching at the design point and then we need to do matching at uh, many of the off design important off design operating points like cruise. So, that we have a matched uh, engine and we have a matched compressor and one of the things which I was just saying that typically compressor has the lowest operating range in terms of mass flow. Most of the other components like intakes or turbines or nozzles would have higher operating mass flow ranges. So, quite often the engine gets uh, restricted by the compressor range rather than any other component. 
Now, if we proceed towards our, with our matching steps, the actual mass flow through the engine can be written down in terms of at any given instant uh, can be written down in terms of m dot c, uh, which is the flow through the compressor and that can be now corrected for the actual operating P 0 1 and T 0 1 from the normalized value. And then the turbine mass flow can be written in terms of uh, whatever the fuel has been pumped in or injected into the combustion chamber and certain amount of air that may have been bled out from the compressor uh, towards normally done from towards the rear of the compressor for various services. So, if we do that we get the turbine mass flow and then the turbine entry pressure can be written down uh, in terms of P 0 3 which would be taken into account the pressure loss in the combustion chamber uh, and then that gives us the turbine entry pressure. Now, based on the actual mass flows through the compressor and turbine, we can now have the work balance or work done for these mass flows to be equated. So, that is a work balance that we need to do for every engine and this may also need to be done spool wise if we have multi spool engines. So, if we, if we do that, we get a work equivalence to begin with. Uh, the, on the left hand side, you have the compressor uh, work and on the right hand side, you have the turbine work together matched with the mechanical efficiency of the shaft connecting the turbine and the compressor. If we have a simple turbojet engine for a spool for example, uh, if we take the LP spool, uh, the LP spool work uh, of the compressor is on the left hand side and on the right hand side you, we have the LP turbines uh, work uh, again multiplied by the uh, mechanical efficiency of the LP shaft. If we have a, a, let us say a fan turbine, then the work done by the fan uh, which is on the left hand side has to be matched with the other LP uh, spool for example, if we have uh, which runs the fan and the mechanical efficiency of the so called fan turbine. And of course, if we have the HP spool uh, which is the core of the engine where HP uh, compressor work on the left hand side has to be matched to the HP turbine work on the right hand side again uh, supplied through the uh, shaft which is the mechanical efficiency of the shaft. Now, all the spools now are having matched uh, work between the turbine and the compressor and we need to remember that this matching has to be done at every instant of the working of the engine. At every instant of the working of the engine, all these pools must have matched work between the compressor and the turbine. And if we do not have a matched work, what we are going to have is uh, that particular spool either will tend to over speed if the turbine is supplying more work or if the compressor requires more work and turbine is unable to supply that work, it will settle down to a lower operating speed or rotating speed. So, every spool must have matching of this kind at every instant of working of the engine. If we look at the work to be done for the compressor or fan, uh, which we talk about the uh, specific work um, and that is given in terms of C p air uh, into delta T and this is written down in terms of the pressure ratio and these are the uh, relations which you have done in your uh, compressor chapter earlier and so we are invoking those relations uh, here again uh, in the in the matching procedure the turbine specific work also can be written down in terms of uh, the turbine efficiency the cp now can be used for the gas and the turbine temperature change and again using the turbine uh, pressure ratio we can write down the work connecting it to the turbine pressure ratio. So, what we are trying to do is we are trying to work write down the instantaneous work that is to be done by the compressor and the turbine and the instantaneous pressure ratio of the compressor and the instantaneous pressure ratio of the turbine would have to be uh, either measured or computed and the matching needs to be done between these two for the instantaneous values of the uh, pressure ratio operational at that instant across the compressor and across the turbine. The turbine mass flow parameter now can be written down uh, in terms of uh, if we use the matching procedure uh, starting with the on the left hand side you have the turbine 
normalized uh, mass flow and on the right hand side you have first the compressor normalized mass flow and then multiply that with the pressure ratio across the uh, compressor, then pressure ratio across the combustion chamber and then the mass flow ratio between the compressor and the turbine that is air and gas and then the temperature ratio across the uh, engine, the cycle temperature ratio so to say. This together gives us the uh, turbine mass flow parameter, the so called normalized mass flow parameter operational through the turbine. The next step would be to find the if at all there is a excess power that is available or that is somehow happening between the turbine and the compressor. So, the net turbine compressor excess power can be written down in terms of uh, the actual power in terms of m dot gas which is the turbine mass flow into the work done by the turbine specific work and uh, the m dot air which is the mass flow through the compressor and the work done by the compressor uh, divided by the mechanical efficiency of the shaft. Now, for a pure turbojet engine, it is necessary that every instant this uh, net uh, co turbine compressor power is 0. That means, there is no net power that needs to be uh, catered to and this should be 0. That means, there should be exact matching between the turbine and the compressor. In case of multi spool turbofile engine, each spool L LP spool as well as HP spool the net power uh, should be 0. So, in a typical turbojet or turbofan, uh, there is no uh, scope for any excess power available uh, from the net turbine compressor matching. So, the power or the work matching between the compressor and turbine as we see now from uh, these uh, calculation steps need to be exact at every instant of operation of the engine. And if they are unequal, either a new speed of the engine or the spool or a new set of values of compressor pressure ratio and mass flow are to be selected to try and arrive at perfect matching. So, one when one is doing the matching exercise uh, at the design or at the time of design of the engine, either uh, you choose a new rotating speed of the engine or you opt for a new compressor pressure ratio uh, and mass flow, which means you need to redefine your cycle uh, definition and your redefine your cycle analysis, uh, so that you arrive at a perfect matching between the compressor and turbine. For turboprop or turbo shaft, the excess shaft power is typically the power that you need to run the propeller or the rotor. Rotor is of course, for the turbo shaft engines. So, the P engine here is not going to be 0 now. This has to be the power that you supply to the propeller or rotor and this also needs exact matching. Now, this power that is required by the propeller and rotor is to be decided by the propeller rotor designer and is to be supplied to the engine designer or the propeller rotor designer has to design exactly for the amount of power that is available to him for a selected engine. So, this again requires exact matching at every instant of operation of the engine. Again, if they are unequal, either the engine speed will uh, settle down to a different value or the mass flow setting will uh, go on to a different mass flow or the compression uh, ratio or the turbine in inlet temperature are to be uh, newly selected or when you have a propeller or a, a rotor, a new propeller or rotor pitch setting needs to be selected. So, which means a propeller and a rotor should have a variable pitch mechanism available with it for selection of pitch depending on the power availability from the engine. And as we know most of the propellers on rotors operational today do have variable pitch mechanism available with them. And all the things that we have been talking about uh, so far that means selection of various component uh, parameters, they all need to be built into the control system logic of the engine which today is the standard FADEC uh, control system and this requires to be uh, built into the control logic of the engine and that is how the engine is controlled, the various parameters of the engine is controlled, the fuel flow is controlled, the uh, nozzle area is controlled 
and if you have variable stagger compressor uh, stators, they are also controlled using this logic, which is built into the uh, control system of the engine. Now, if we have a choke nozzle, the actual mass flow is invariant with the change of other parameters. That is what is of course, the basic understanding of a choke nozzle. So, the flow through the uh, turbine for example, uh, is now going to become constant. Uh, the earlier part we had written down in the earlier uh, slide and this now becomes a constant uh, value and as we have uh, d discussed before, the designer tries to design an engine where for most of the time the nozzle is choked. Most of the operation of the engine, the nozzle is indeed choked which means it is operating at uh, instantaneous maximum mass flow. Now, assume that the pressure ratio across the combustion chamber that is P 0 2 by P 0 3 is also constant and that the compressor mass flow and the turbine mass flow are also equal to each other. Then what we can write down in the simplified form is that P 0 2 by P 0 1 is equal to K 1 into the normalized mass flow into the cycle temperature ratio. Uh, where k 1 is some constant. So, one can relate the uh, pressure ratio of the engine to the normalized mass flow of the engine to the cycle pressure temperature ratio of the engine through one single constant k 1. So, this is a, a simplified version or simplified way of matching all the three primary parameters of the engine. If we look at uh, the diagram which we had looked at in the last class also, the pressure ratio versus normalized mass flow versus the cycle temperature ratio and the constant temperature uh, ratio lines are the linear lines cutting right through the compressor uh, map so to say and these lines of course, are the speed lines. Uh, so, what we see here is this large uh, portion over here, the engine is likely to be operating at choked flow condition, whereas at the lower compression ratios and the lower mass flows, the engine is likely to be operating under unchoked flow condition. So, by design, a large part of the engine is a large time of the engine operation is done during with choked flow condition through the nozzle and turbine and the compressor is uh, not choked, but it simply says that the engine is operating under choked flow condition and that is shown here on the compressor map. Now, if we move forward and see that the cycle temperature ratio is held constant, if it is held constant, then the pressure ratio can be written down in terms of K 2 into the normalized mass flow, where K 2 is another constant and the cycle temperature ratio T 0 3 by T 0 1 has now been taken out of the equation. Now, for a straight and level cruise flight, uh, we can say that uh, the pressure ratio, cycle pressure ratio can be related to the cycle temperature ratio through another constant called K 3. If however, T 0 1 by T 0 3 that is the temperature ratio is, is indeed also held constant for a cruise flight when the mass flow parameter is expected to be constant. So, that has been taken out of the equation. And now, if we say T 0 1 by T 0 3 that is the cycle temperature ratio is also held constant uh, for a cruise flight, then the P 0 2 by P 0 1 that is your pressure ratio, cycle pressure ratio then also becomes a constant. So, through a few simplifications, we can see that the matching of the various primary parameters, the pressure ratio, the temperature ratio and the normalized mass flow can be related to each other through simple constants K 1, K 2, K 3, 4, K 4 depending on your operational uh, point. So, these are slightly simplified uh, to show that during matching one can arrive at some very straightforward uh, parametric relationship between the fundamental uh, parameters or what we call functional relationship between the fundamental parameters. If we look at the of design matching of a typical turbojet engine. If we start from the beginning, the steps that you have done before in great detail uh, in the earlier lectures. So, we will we'll invoke all those steps over here again 
1 by 1. At the intake, for example, the pressure that is developed through the intake can be written down in terms of the intake efficiency and the mass flow with which the flow is coming in and using the isentropic relationship with the efficiency built into it, it gives us the uh, P 0 1 that is the compressor entry uh, pressure. Similarly, we can get the compressor entry uh, temperature from the ambient temperature with which the flow is coming in using the intake flow conditions. Now, at higher flight Mach number m a, the value of P 0 1 and T 0 1 would be higher and higher at any given altitude where uh, P a and T a are constant. So, higher the Mach number at which you fly, your P 0 1 and T 0 1 are going to be higher and higher. On the other hand, for a constant flight Mach number uh, m a, uh, the P 0 1 and T 0 1 decreases with uh, increasing altitude and vice versa. That means, as you go higher up in the altitude, your P a and T a are going down. So, you have, if your Mach number is constant, your P 0 1, T 0 1 are going to come down and of course, uh, vice versa. So, uh, these are the intake conditions with which you start your uh, turbojet engine configuration. Now, the ramp pressure development in the intake, which increases the and decreases the compressor inlet and then the compressor outlet absolute values of the pressures. Um, now, these increases and decreases also the turbine inlet and outlet absolute values of the pressures and thus the pressure ratio across the nozzle increases and decreases. So, the absolute value of the pressure delivered to the nozzle entry also increases and decreases with the ram pressure that is happening across the intake. So, uh, we see here that the absolute values also are important because that absolute value at the intake to the in inlet to the nozzle sets up the nozzle pressure ratio, which then operates according to the uh, pressure ratio laws. So, the absolute values also need to be computed and figured out. As the nozzle high pressure ratio is, if the nozzle pressure ratio is high, the flow is choked and it is then independent of the nozzle pressure ratio. So, as soon as it reaches a, a choking pressure ratio, then from there onwards, it does not matter what the nozzle inlet pressure is anymore. And now, from there onwards, it does not matter what the flight speed is anymore. Hence, once it is choked, uh, it is independent of the forward speed of the aircraft. And this is what I mentioned earlier in this lecture. So, which means that most of the engine designers would like to design in a, such a manner that for most of the operation of the flight, the nozzle is operating in choke flow condition, which means the nozzle is independent of the flight speed uh, of the aircraft. Now, that allows us also to fix the turbine operating point with respect to the nozzle choked condition, which we have done in the last class. That means, the turbine and the nozzle have to be matched to each other and this matching requires that uh, if the nozzle is choked, it is easier to match the turbine with such a choked nozzle. So, we see that for most of the time of the operation of the aero engine, the it is in operating in choked flow condition. Few times when it is not choked are when the engine is uh, aircraft is taxiing or when it is approaching for landing and the landing itself. These are the periods during which the engine is actually uh, unchoked and operating under uh, low thrust uh, making and low compression ratio and other operating conditions. The nozzle pressure ratio which we are talking about and which needs to be taken to choking condition can be simply computed from the various pressure ratios that we have uh, looked at. The intake pressure ratio, the compressor pressure ratio, the combustion chamber pressure ratio and of course, the turbine pressure ratio. So, all of them lined up together indeed gives you the nozzle pressure ratio and we intend to uh, ensure that for most of the time of operation that remains at choking value. So, uh, as we see all the parameters are kind of connected to each other through simple parametric analysis. The thrust of an engine can now indeed be written down in terms of uh, 
simple thrust equation that we have done earlier um, in the course. Uh, in terms of uh, the mass flow through the engine and the velocity, uh, the exit velocity, which is written here as V 5 is the exit velocity with which is coming out and uh, the different of that with the flight velocity of the aircraft. And the momentum thrust in this equation is uh, also supplemented by the pressure thrust, which comes out of the uh, nozzle exit pressure. And if there is a residual nozzle exit pressure, that as we know gives us a pressure thrust and that together gives us the instantaneous thrust of the engine. So, this is going to be the instantaneous thrust of the engine as related to the instantaneous flight speed of the aircraft. So, if the uh, aircraft is operational such that the gas exhaust speed uh, V 5 or V e depends on the flow condition at the nozzle exit and when it reaches choking, uh, that is the maximum mass flow that you can have through the engine and all the, if all the parameters are then operational in unison as an unit, then we instantaneously we get the maximum possible thrust for that particular operating condition and that is what I mentioned earlier that engine designer tries to ensure that any given instant the engine is producing preferably the maximum possible thrust, which as I mentioned is not the maximum thrust of the engine, but for that given operating condition that is the maximum possible thrust. So, most of the time the engine should be operating under conditions that gives maximum thrust for that particular operating condition that is maximizing the use of the engine uh, for the purpose for which it is created. During the climb operation, if the nozzle is choked, it will remain so during the entire climb with continuous fall in ambient pressure. Now, this is something which we just saw that if you are in the last equation, if your ambient pressure is falling, uh, your uh, all the other pressures would start to fall actually. On the other hand, your flight Mach number is increasing, so the pressures may get restored we need to ensure that during this entire climb operation that this nozzle pressure ratio remains at choked value. Uh, so, that we have maximized uh, thrust creation during the entire uh, climb operation through all these pressures that are operational inside the engine. So, uh, this is another thing which the engine designer needs to ensure that all the units are uh, the sub components the intake, the compressor, the combustion chamber, the turbine, a nozzle and all of them are matched together in one unit such that for example, during the climb they continue to produce maximum thrust during the entire flight operation uh, even when the altitude is changing, the flight Mach number is changing, but the engine continues to produce maximum instantaneous thrust during the entire operation of the climb. Now, this is this can be done only if you have a matched engine, only if you have an engine that has taken care of this continuous variation of the parameters that invariably happen and during the entire operation then you can have maximum instantaneous thrust production, uh, production by the engine. So, this is what matching essentially accomplishes that it produces maximum thrust, instantaneous thrust at any given point of operation. If we look at uh, a choke nozzle operation, the exhaust velocity is uh, given by the instantaneous uh, temperature that is operational at the exit of the nozzle and this is uh, assuming that the flow there is choked and it is a convergent nozzle, we get a sonic velocity as the uh, exhaust velocity. For an unchoked nozzle, we assume that the flow has continuously uh, accelerated to its uh, maximum value and hence we use the isentropic relationship that uh, you are familiar with uh, using the maximum uh, nozzle pressure ratio. That means, assuming that the nozzle finally exhausts flow to the ambient at ambient pressure. That means, maximum acceleration or maximum uh, change of velocity through the nozzle has taken place to the uh, ambient pressure and this is the unchoked nozzle that uh, one can get uh, without getting choked. Now, uh, for the choked nozzle, 
the we know that it reaches the critical pressure written here as P c and this uh, is given in terms of the nozzle operating condition uh, starting with uh, let us say P 0 4 coming from the turbine and then the nozzle efficiency and using the component uh, specific ratio of the gas operational at the nozzle, uh, we can find the choking uh, pressure that is operational at the uh, nozzle exit. Uh, for the unchoked nozzle as I mentioned, uh, typically it is assumed that it is uh, fully uh, accelerated uh, to the ambient pressure P A. Now, if you do that, the engine performance as you can see now uh, over the entire procedure that we have gone through is decided by engine normalized speed uh, to begin with n by root over t 0 1, but the maximum performance is capped by the engine uh, maximum speed design speed that is n max for which the engine or, uh, components have been designed taking into account the structural and many other issues and hence there is no way an engine is going to operate beyond n max. So, the engine maximum speed is decided typically by the stress limits of the rotating components of compressor and turbine. In turbine, you have uh, additional issues of high uh, temperature and the issues like creep uh, uh, also come in. So, those things uh, finally, decide what the uh, maximum speed rotational speed of a particular spool uh, should be combination of compressor and turbine. And then this uh, n max divided by root over t 0 1 is the normalized maximum uh, speed parameter, but as the ambient temperature increases this thrust will decrease and the engine speed cannot be increased anymore. Now, this is where the problem is we know as the ambient temperature increases in a hot day or in tropical countries like India the engine thrust starts falling. To compensate for that, the only way you can do that is to engine the, uh, rotate the rotating components at a higher speed uh, to increase mass flow and to increase the engine performance. But if it is already reached the maximum uh, speed, it cannot be increased anymore, and uh, the the control algorithm of the engine will stop it from going to higher speeds, and hence the engine thrust cannot be increased anymore. So, engine does reach its maximum thrust under those operating conditions. Most of the engines even today tend to be designed for uh, the uh, international uh, standard temperature and pressure which is 15 degree centigrade and 288 K and hence they are bound to give lower performance in tropical hot atmospheres uh, as in countries like India and uh, correspondingly uh, slightly higher performance in the colder climates in the northern hemisphere. Uh, this is something which is unavoidable at the moment, because most engines do tend to use these parameters as the starting design parameters. And this is something which uh, requires to be uh, factored into the normalizing parameters that we have used and hence we have defined the corrected mass flow and such corrections need to be applied to ensure that during the process of matching, uh, the matching is also done with reference to these reference temperature and pressure which we talked about earlier, because those are the values at which the engine is indeed designed. So, we see that we have a large number of issues here that need to be taken care of during the process of engine design all the components of the engine would have to be matched together and only then you have a matched unit which we call engine, which supplies power or thrust to the aircraft and to cater to the aircraft at every instant of the flight of the aircraft. The instantaneous performance of the engine has to be a matched performance of all the components inside the engine. So, we need to ensure that that happens by design and do not leave it to chance. So, these are the simple procedures that is inevitably needs to be done during the process of engine design. In the next class, we will look at the component matching and how these components sometimes need to be sized to ensure good matching and this is what we will do in the next class. The component matching, 
and sizing of the engine components of aircraft engines.